And we're live. All right, welcome everybody, and thank you guys for joining me on the fourth. I think this is the fourth time I'm trying to do a little live stream. Uh, really appreciate it. Hopefully, turn down this volume right here. Uh, but yeah, basically, we are trying some out some new things. Uh, I've got a new taste made collab coming up. I've got a couple ideas. I did a spring salad video recently that was pretty successful. So I was kind of thinking about riffing on that and doing a little something different. Uh, basically, I've got a bunch of produce. I've got some peas, some flat beans, asparagus, cow, caldeek, uh, this root that's kind of like a celery root that I've never quite used before, but I've seen a lot and I'm very excited for. Uh, we got some red onion and um, yeah, let's kind of get through it. I'm going to do it and uh, talk as I go. But basically, this is kind of a little bit of a figure it out as we go thing. I've got a rough idea of what I'm going to do. Uh, how many people we got? Oh, we got a couple people in there. Nice. Hello, whoever's watching. Uh, but we're going to do a little chili crisp vinaigrette, I think, is going to be the big difference. But I'm excited. we got some boiling water ready for some blanching. Let's get to it. Uh, so I'm going to adjust the camera real quick. And we are going to go down into our cutting position. So I have a toddler, so everything is kind of very baby talk these days. A lot of Miss Rachel, a lot of Bumble Noms and Super Simple. If you know, you know. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. We got our hands right here. So uh, there's gonna be a good amount of prep work. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little red onion we have here and uh, we are going to chop it up. Yeah, open up this F stop just a touch, it's looking a little dark there. But yeah, let's go. So I'm just gonna start by kind of making some thin slices with this red onion. Peel this back a little bit. Dark, yeah. For some reason this is coming off real dark. Oh yeah, that's why. Because I didn't turn on my light. Turning on the light helps a bit, huh? <laughs> so we are just going to peel it. We're going to chop the top, chop the bottom. I'll just do that to the other side too real quick while we're at it. And we're going to do kind of a similar method to what you might have seen on the other video if you saw my spring salad video where we're just going to basically soak them in some warm water to kind of make them a little bit kind of mellower, I guess. So kind of mellow out the onion flavor. You can also do it with some red wine vinegar if you wanted it to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more tangy. So right when we get to the end here, because it's a little weird, just gonna kind of turn the onion. All right. We are gonna have a second camera eventually. I know I've mentioned it a couple times now, but it's gonna be, uh, make some of this close-up detail a little bit easier to kind of see. So like I said, we're just gonna put that in a bowl, We've got some warm water, and we're just gonna pour that right over there. We're just gonna kind of let it sit and do its thing. And I guess like, kind of like blanching it to a degree, except uh, it's gonna be a slow, slow warm blanch instead of a really hot, quick blanch. Um, you know, feel free if you have any questions in the comments, give me a shout, I am open to answering things. So, the uh, we'll do the blanching stuff later. So the one thing I wanted to do with these asparagus tips is I do want to, I'm just going to separate the really woody ones from like the kind of semi woody ones, uh, but I'm going to actually shave these versus blanching these. Uh, these ones are pretty woody. You can see it's almost like all the way up to here. Uh, so we're just going to take all of that off real quick. Close that into our composty area. We're gonna trim only kind of like that. All right, so we're kind of left with our nice pieces of asparagus. And then I am going to move these here. And I'm just going to kind of lay this with a peeler. Just kind of give it the work. Gonna turn it. Yeah, you know, it's a little bit difficult, actually. Mandolin would actually be really well for this, be well for this too. 
we're just going to put the rest of it over to the side. Probably do this with a mandolin for the final recipe. But it works pretty well. We will use the rest of this for something else, so don't worry. It's not going in the garbage for pieces that don't get actually used here. And we're just going to peel these real thin. So this is going to be kind of like a little bit of a mix, whereas uh, the kind of last video that I'd done the last week it was definitely more of like a straight up all things spring salad. And this one's gonna be all things spring with some other vegetables that do grow in the spring would grow other times. Like, you know, we're gonna have uh, the celery root and the daikon radish and that kind of stuff. Um, but also the ones that grow in the summer do taste a little different than the ones that grow other times of the year. So this video is gonna be a good amount of prep. I'm gonna kind of just talk through it as we go. Now, probably what I'll end up doing is just chopping this all up and throwing it in the pasta later, the pieces that don't uh, don't get peeled. And actually, you, know, you might even want to just pick this up and do it by hand like that. Get a little bit deeper. And I think mandolin is probably going to be the way to go with these. And this works great. And like, honestly, like this probably is the part that you really want more for the salad because of the flavor. But, you know, a mandolin will let you get a lot more consistent and will let you get a lot further down versus here what you have, especially with this peeler. The board's kind of preventing you from getting super low. All right, we're making headway. We're peeling all these things. Hello to the three people that are watching. Welcome and thank you for joining me on this live streaming journey. Uh, lighting wise, we're doing all right. I think I am gonna add a little bit more light in the future, which will help me kind of close down the lens a little bit. And then, oh, you know what I just lost? Let's play back on my monitor. So now I'm flying blind. What are you gonna do? I actually take a quick little pause. Just pull this up on my phone real quick. Pause. That way I can monitor here in case anybody wants to uh, talk and stuff like that. All right, we're back. You know, I think this is going to be good for our knees. I'm going to take the rest and just put them over here. And then I'm going to get a little bowl. Put them in here. And just let those sit. All right. All I got next. Next we have this, which the name is escaping me right now. It does start with call. I want to say it's like a caldig or something like that. But basically, it's kind of in the cabbage family. Um, it's a little bit similar to like a celery root. It's got a nice flavor. I've seen it used. I've tasted it. I've never actually cooked with it. Um, this I'm going to definitely be using on a mandolin when I do the actual cooking. For now, I'm just going to uh, chop the bottom down. I'm using that uh, Headley and Bennett chef knife right now. Thank you guys for sending this to me. I really enjoy it. We're just going to cut that in half, cut that in quarters, probably only do that half part. I don't know if we're going to end up using the whole root. And basically, we're going to kind of do this little semi uh, kind of court, half circle shape. And we're going to try and get it as thin as possible. OK, so thin as possible on a mandolin will be very easy. On here, we have that, which is like pretty thin. Not that bad, huh? Yeah. We will do the best we can. All right. You know, it's slicing thin. You don't have to go super fast. Sometimes it really is just taking your time, cut by cut. Look at that. And again, when we get too kind of close where it's not comfortable anymore, we're just going to flip this root down. So some are thinner than others. Yeah, we're kind of just going for this little half moony shape. I cut off this little piece right there. 
And uh, yeah, let's keep going. I can go a little further down on the knife to get a little bit more into it. And we're going to get pretty thin, but again, a mandolin is definitely going to let you get that like paper thin consistency that really would be nice. But the whole point of like, you know, peeling the asparagus and cutting this like this is really that we want these things to, all these are going to be served raw. So we really want things to be enjoyable. We don't want them to have too much texture to where they're really kind of, the fork can't really work them very well, where they're really, you know, they're too chewy in comparison to everything else, because there's going to be a lot of different vegetables. So we don't want any one vegetable necessarily like taking center stage and potentially not even in a great way. That's also why we're doing the onion trick, all that kind of stuff. But at the same point, we're trying not to just like cook, 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 cook. Actually, I should have taken that probably stem out before I started. Choppy, 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 choppy. And then the other angle, once I get the second camera, should be able to show a lot more of this. Yeah. You can see that's not that bad. Hmm. Yeah, that's a nice flavor. You know, it's very different. All right, so we're just going to take this, put this here. Almost like a radish, somewhere in between like a radish and a cabbage and a celery. I dig it. All right. Now we are on the pain in the butt stage, which we're going to start. Where's my thingy? Bench scraper. Always a flex thing to have. Just wipe down my knife real quick. So we're going to start with some flat beans. All we're going to do is kind of trim the tops and the bottoms a bit, just any of these uh, little bits that stick out. And I just trim the tops, actually. The bottoms don't need to be trimmed. And we're going to basically just blanch these for about a minute. I'm going to look at the main focus here. Are we in focus? There we go. That's better, huh? Um, as far as how many we're going to be doing, uh, I'm going to kind of just do a handful. We're kind of going for like more or less even amounts of all of these veggies because, again, we want it to kind of be a nice little blend. And we have some of these flat beans I picked up from the market today, and we also have some English peas that we are going to husk, which is a bit of a pain, but like not as bad as you might think. Do, 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 do. And birds of a feather. Do, do, do. I have Elmo stuck in my head. In that toddler life. Yeah, we're just going to kind of go through these. Prep work can be a little bit boring, but you're going to just keep your head down. You get through it. And yeah. Save a little bit of money because you're doing it yourself. And you have the satisfaction of knowing that you really went through all that pain in the butt work to get to your food. Hey. And at the end of the day, isn't that what this is all about? Satisfaction. With this, you have satisfaction. I guarantee it. I don't actually guarantee it. But I find it satisfying. All right, we got about this many beans. Putting them back in the bowl for our blanching moment, which is going to happen soon. It's going to get rid of these. Toss them away. And now we have the English peas. The trick to doing English peas is do them over a bowl. Boom. Bam. Uh, so what I kind of do is kind of just pop the top, run your hand down the center to kind of open it up. And look, you got that nice little line of peas. And you put them all in there. You know, 
not all of them will work out that perfectly. Yeah, you kind of just like tear and go. Kind of try to keep it all in your hand. You know, it really is like, I think it is that like, that popping motion, then kind of taking your thumb and dragging it downwards. It's one of those things that like, you really want to kind of get a rhythm at. If you're working in a restaurant, you would be doing an obscene amount of these. So efficiency, efficiency is uh, pretty important with a task like this. But also like, you know, I don't know. Do whatever you want to do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. And we are not going to do all of these Ps because this looks like an absurd amount, but we're going to do a bunch of them. You know, this is the uh, less glamorous part of Joey Cook's Foods, but it's an important part. Uh, you know, get a little hippy dippy, but there's something nice about like actually like prepping your food and cooking and like the work that kind of goes in before. And I think like, <laughs> I don't know, I feel like like the more you actually kind of work your ingredients, the more you start to really know your ingredients. And it's all about like really just like going through the motions and process. And even something like this, like I might not have been very good at this the first time I did this, but after sitting down and doing like 50 or 100 of these beans, you get pretty good at it. You get that muscle memory. And, you know, you have that, like, reference for how to approach other things and other peas. And isn't that what it's all just about? Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. When I went to the market, so I went to this place. It's right next to Brothers Market in Astoria, which is, uh, I did that little shopping video last week on Instagram and on YouTube. But a really great market. They have a lot of, uh, they work with a lot of local farms in Astoria. They're open, or in New York and Connecticut. They're open 24 7, which is kind of crazy. But there's this little Greek market kind of right next door to it that I don't think they're affiliated. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're not affiliated. They might hate each other, they might love each other. But uh, it's probably one of a little bit of both, to be honest. But the place next door is really good as well. It's like a much, much smaller little vibe. Um, but they have a little bit more, uh, they have some different stuff. And I got these here. And when I was checking out at the cash register, there's this old Greek lady peeling the beans, or the peas. She was sitting there peeling them, eating them. And they asked me, uh, oh, do you want, you could have the prepped ones. But I don't want, I kind of, uh, for some reason I decided that you guys should watch me husk all these peas tonight. <laughs> I guess maybe I just wanted to get better at it. And again, these are going to be actually, uh, I don't even know if it's again, but uh, these are going to be a very short blanch. We're just going to basically blanch these and the long beans, the long flat beans, for about a minute. And it's just to kind of uh, make them a little easier on the tummy, a little easier to kind of chew, but also keeping them pretty, like, crispy, crunchy. Oh, yeah. It's funny, you can actually see there's a ton of husks in the corner of these. Little did you know you'd be watching five minutes of me peeling peas. You know, sometimes you do the technique, sometimes you just tear the thing apart. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Do, 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 do. So we're gonna probably get another dozen or so of these and then we are done and we're gonna move on to the blanching. And once we blanch, it's pretty much just gonna be combining, whisking up a quick chili crisp vinaigrette and plating and seeing uh, if this works. I mean, I'm sure it's not gonna taste bad, but what we're really looking for is to see if these things complement each other, which I think they will. The only kind of things that are a little out of left field is the uh, the daikon, which we still have to do, and that celery root. I think it's gonna work. And we're keeping going. Oh, I'm just gonna skip that one. All right, hello to whoever joined. Thank you for joining us. We're happy to have you here. We are just uh, chucking peas. 
We're almost done now. We're about to move on to our blanching step. Much more exciting blanching action coming up. Not all this shucker. Is that how you say it? Is it shucking peas or is it uh, splitting peas? I don't know. I'm not going to split hairs about it. Hey, it's Scott. Cooking here too. Got distracted and missed the first little bit. No worries, Scott. You came. That's all that matters. All right. Splitting the peas. Do 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 do. Splitting the peas with you. Split in the peas. All right. We're gonna do about five or six more of these, and we are ready. Now we're kind of just doing like the behemoth method of just like curling our hands inward and pulling out the back. First, we're doing a little pop, a little thumb, thumb drag and scoop, pop, thumb drag and scoop. Now we're just kind of doing a behemoth version of it, which is just like tear it all apart. Ah, take that, you peas. We're going to boil you. All right, and I think uh, I think that's good. Yeah, we got a couple more real quick. One, two. Would you rather live Midgar from Final Fantasy or Gundam? Would you rather live in Midgar from Final Fantasy or Gundam after the one year war? Uh, I think Midgar from Final Fantasy VII is my vibe. Gundam after the one year war. I mean, that's, I don't know. I mean, Gundam after the one year war is probably a better quality of life all around. Uh, but something about that Final Fantasy vibe, I don't know. Final Fantasy, like, Midgar reminds me much more of, like, a New York City vibe, for sure. So, I would have to say that. Alright. We're shucked up. Let's do it. Alright, I'm going to save these last ones for later. So then, one more step before going to our blanching. We are going to peel some daikon. Uh, we have a pretty big local daikon here. We're probably only going to use about this much, so I'm just going to chop that piece right there. And I'm just going to use my knife to kind of take off some of this stuff. I'm going to kind of roughly, roughly peel it like that. Um, this side of daikon, you don't really need to peel it. This would have washed pretty well already. Um, just kind of doing that to do it. Up the other top. How do we want to do this? I think what we're going to do is just cut this like this. And then I think we're just going to kind of peel it like this in our hand. See, we have these nice, like, kind of paper thin peels. And we're going to kind of stack all those peels together. And we're going to cut them into little uh, half matchsticks. Actually, I'm just going to go from the side now. Look at that. I might not even need to cut those into half matchsticks. Yeah, I think we're just going to go from the side. That way it's kind of already pretty stable. And again, like mandolin. That's the first thing I'm noticing from all these really thin things. What does he say? Because magic with Final Fantasy stuff. Yeah, well, magic, yeah, that's for sure. For sure. I don't know. The real question is, like, where would you live in Midgar? I don't know. Are you living on the uh, Sector 7 slums? Are you doing, uh, what's it called? Michael, what's a place called where all the cool stuff is in Midgar, where uh, you go to the gym and get dressed up like a woman? You know what I'm talking about. Ugh, the Honey Bee Inn is there. All right, so immediately what I'm noticing, and I should have noticed, is that it's uh, pretty watery, but like in a pretty crispy, good way. So I don't think we want to put too much of this in because I don't think we want to like overwaterify the salad. It 
too watery and such. So I'm just going to take this and put this on top of our celery root. And we go from there. Take these pieces for later. Let's wipe off our knife, wipe down our board. Clean up, clean up, clean so it's not a mess. All right, let's do some blanching. So I'm going to reposition the camera over here real quick. We've got this pot of water boiling. We have a little ice bath behind it. Ooh la la. There we go. All right, we're bringing that heat back up. So we do have to salt this water. We're going to salt it pretty liberally. I know a lot of people were a little taken aback by the amount of salt we used in the last salad. But note that for something like this, most of that water is, or that salt is staying in this water. So we are just going to put these beans in here. We've got a little metal spider to help kind of manage these. Although actually for the beans, I'm going to grab some tongs. All right, and we are just going to let that go for about one minute. You do want it to kind of be like a roaring boil. This is a little under roaring, <laughs> roaring boil, but it works. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So we have, this. we have this. I'm just moving some stuff around while we wait for these. One, two, three. And this is going to be our kind of longest live stream yet, I think, actually. We're already kind of getting close to the half hour mark, probably because I spent 10 minutes shucking peas. But yeah, I think. Let's talk about what we're doing with the format a little bit while we uh, do this. I think what I'm going to be doing in the future more is maybe having some guests on. We're going to have the second camera, and it's going to be much more of like a like a gamer streaming experience where you have kind of me, you have to look at my face in kind of the bottom corner while you <laughs> get to see the close-up action and the kind of main frame of it. So, you know, let me know if any suggestions or anything like that. Let me see. Looks like Michael has left us. He left us. He left us. I'll let those go for another like 20 or 30 seconds. We don't want to cook them too much because we still want them to be nice, crispy, crunchy. But because these aren't like sugar snap peas, these are going to take a little bit longer. Or as a sugar snap pea, you could just eat the thing right in the husk. I mean, these things, you know, I guess these are pretty more of like a two minute, two minute blanch versus the one minute blanch for the peas. All right, how are we looking? My hair is soaked. It gets really hot in this apartment when we start using this oven. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to need another minute or two. All right, so I lied. This is going to be more of a kind of three-minute blanch. And since that's the case, it's pretty close to the end. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in these peas for that last minute. Just kind of save a little bit of time. <coughs> I'm just going to stir those in together. Look at that. Economize. And we're going to go from here to our ice bath to our uh, tray to dry. We just got those lined with some basic kitchen towels. Basic kitchen towels, I highly recommend if you don't have. I usually keep a stack of these next to me while I cook. They're lifesavers from everything from wiping things down, cleaning your knife, you know, having something to lay stuff on, wiping your face because you're sweating profusely. Let's see. Do, 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 do. And birds of a feather. Oh, wall market. All right, now those are looking pretty done. There's beans. Feeling pretty good. Peas are almost good. Just give them another like 20 seconds. 
Anyway, it should be a little bit more of a roaring boil, but it's fine. It's fine. Right, so let's pull these, let's pull the beans right in that, right in that water. Even behind most of the peas so far. That's fine. Those just need a minute. Another bean, and another one, and another one. We're gonna go. We're gonna scoop up our peas with the spider. To kill the heat. And that's that. You're not going to touch that. Oh, that's the other thing they're useful for. Not burning your hands. <laughs> All right. So we are going to change that focus. We're just going to kind of let these cool for a moment. ice water they really don't need long you're kind of so the point you do with the ice water is you want to shock them so that they don't kind of continue to cook and get mushy while you kind of do all the rest of this stuff all right so it's feeling pretty good so i'm just going to pull all of this lay it out here pull these veins and get the spider back and get all these peas making sure to avoid the ice cubes A little bit of a gritty live show. It'll be more polished as we move on. But for now, that's what we got. All right. So we're going to go back to the main cutting board position. All right. Looks good to me. So we've got almost all of our stuff. We're gonna take our onions. I'm actually just gonna pull those. You can really drain them if you want. I'm just gonna kind of like loosely drain them and put them in here. It's fine. Get rid of that bowl. Yeah. I could definitely even tell, tell already that these onions are like basically kind of like lightly cooked. A lot less pungent than they used to be. I'm kind of ready to be worked. All right, so what we got? We have our asparagus. We have our red onion. We have our, not celery root, I keep calling it, but it's the other thing that's very similar. We have our daikon. We got our peas. We got our beans. So what we're going to do is combine these all in a bowl. Let's get a big bowl. I don't want to be stuck with a little one. And I'm going to start off by putting a little bit of arugula in there. This has already been washed. So arugula is going to kind of be our base. A couple of yellowish leaves on there. Not the prettiest arugula, but it'll do. It's totally fine. And then let's just start putting stuff in. So we got our arugulas in there. We are going to put our asparagus pieces in there. Lovely. Let's put some of the red onion. I'm going to start with about half this red onion. So I do think this might be a bit much. We made a little less than I was anticipating. Yeah, maybe a little more than half of in there. That's fine. I'm going to put in our daikon. We're going to put in some of these <laughs> not celery, celery pieces. Some of these are a little thick. I probably should have cored it a little bit more. So I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to lift up this whole towel. And I'm just going to shake in all the beans and all the peas. All right. Take a break. We're going to move this to the side. Let's whisk up a quick vinaigrette. So, what do we got for a vinaigrette? Tell us what we got for the vinaigrette, Johnny. I will. All right. But my name's not Johnny. 
because magic was said. It's the same comment it was a minute ago. All right, so we have our super magic taste, which is a super tasty chili crisp been made by a small company out of Toronto in Canada. Uh, I've been working with them. They are very, very sweet people, and this is a very specifically tasty chili crisp. So we got a little bit left in this jar. We're going to about use all of it. What I like about this one in particular is that it's still pretty spicy, but it really has like some really fruity notes to it, which I think is from the gochujang in particular that they add it with. And then it settles into this really like deep tamari flavor. So we're going to get a little bit of that. A little dash of soy sauce. We're gonna do a little dash of red boat fish sauce just to funk it up a little bit. And uh, I think that's kind of it. Actually, this isn't even that much. So I think what we're just gonna do. So this already has our oil component. Oh, I know what we're missing. We need a little bit of a little dash of that sesame oil. Where? Is it though? If we can find it, we will use it. If we can't, we'll say screw it. Oh, I know where it is. It's actually just right above here. And what we're going to use is actually just a little bit of perilla seed oil, which is a very, very similar to sesame oil, but slightly different. Uh, perilla leaf, like sesame leaf, shiso leaf, I think they're all like pretty similar, semi related. Depends on what country you're in. I'm sure people would argue about it. Right, so we're going to get that. I'm going to put a little bit of salt in here. I'm actually just going to use some cracked black pepper. Using that pepper cannon from Mom Kitchen, which they gave me very nicely. Very, very lovely pepper cannon. Let's see. Mm. Oh, yeah. And it's delicious. It was really good. All right, it sounded like one of my videos. So we're going to take this big old thing. We're just going to dump that all in there. And what we are going to do, believe it or not, is add a little bit more salt because none of these veggies have been salted. Again, most of that water, salt stayed in the water. So I'm just going to kind of do it like this. I have uh, clean hands. I like to mix with my hands. I know some people get kind of weirded out about that stuff. I do not. If you do get weirded out about it though, just use a set of tongs. What I like about the hand method is you get kind of a better feel for everything. You don't kind of damage everything as much as uh, you would. And uh, everything kind of gets a little bit better mixed up. I find it more efficient and just generally a better, it's more pleasurable experience. All right. <clears throat> so we have a lot of textural variants. I'm not sure I'll use the flat beans. They're a little big for the mix up that I'm kind of doing. I might just switch that out for like a sugar snap pea or something like that. All right, so we have our salad mixed. I just rinse off my hands real quick and get a plate. I'm gonna start. Excuse me for the loud noises. Let's see. So next part we have some labna and some ricotta salata. The ricotta salata is basically just a salted ricotta. That is, so ricotta means I believe like cooked again. And uh, salata means salted. So this is just like kind of an aged ricotta that's been salted, very crumbly, good for salads. Hey, kitty cat, don't do that. My kitty cat playing with our uh, gym mats. Next to rub his fingers on them for his paws, claws. The claws, and we have a little bit of labna left. I kind of wish that we had had some more, but what you're gonna do, we're just gonna take that labna and we're gonna put it on this plate.
We're gonna kind of just give it a little, nice light little coat. And I guess Lobna really is one of those things that you don't need a ton of it. You know, just kind of smear it around there, get it pretty looking. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. And Lobna, I mean, it's essentially a Greek yogurt. I mean, it virtually tastes identical. It's not as um, firm as a Greek yogurt, though. So we have our labna, and we're just going to go, and we're going to take a nice big handful of this salad. We're going to go right on top of that. And we're going to get some more of these colorful bits to put on top. When you're plating a salad like this, you kind of want this nice big, like almost like kind of a, like a cone coming up. You want it to kind of have a little bit of height to it because it really kind of helps it look prettier on the plate. All right. Now let's see what else we got. So we got that. And then what we're going to do is take a little bit of this ricotta salata and break that off. We're just going to give it a little crumbly. A little crumbly, a little crumbly, ricotta, ricotta, a little crumbly, a little crumbly, yeah. And then, one last little step, I have some toasted sesame seeds that I'm just going to kind of lightly put around there. And I'm mainly just doing that because kind of flavor profile has got a lot of sesame in it already. Add a little bit more textural variance. You know, the one thing the salad maybe could use is a nut to help give it a little bit more fat, which might just kind of help with that uh, with that bite a little bit. But uh, yeah, there you have it. I probably should have kept this view for this uh, pretty plating shot. But there it is. We have our finished salad. Let's go and taste it. Uh, do 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 two birds of a feather autofocus and we're back what we got we got this very attractive salad which let's see wait, we've got autofocus autofocus doesn't know what i want to do doesn't do the oh 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 somebody kind of had a weird thing with my ooh the other day but just if anyone was wondering my reference was very much mr bean um, now some people kind of got a little confused about it and they had some other thoughts. All right, let's see what we got. So yeah, I think immediately those beans are just a little bit too, a little bit too big for this, uh, this fork. Mm. Beans are cooked well, that being said. Mmm. Nice flavor from the chili crisp. Mm-hmm. Got a little more lob down in there. Mm-hmm. Mm okay. Yeah, I think it's really tasty. There are definitely some modifications I'm going to make. I think the vinaigrette is pretty much there. I mean, it's just like this really dominant flavor that's really lovely. Um, I think vegetable choice, I should either really lean into the spring vegetables or maybe just go a little bit lighter and more into these like kind of shaved lighter textures. I think I'm going more shaved lighter textures. I still might include the peas because they kind of go nicely and they're kind of a fun little pop. But obviously... These massive beans, while tasty, it is not really manageable. I think you want like a nice salad that you could kind of shovel into your face, you know? But anyways, we got lunch. Thank you guys for joining me. I really appreciate it. We're going to be doing a bunch more of these. The format's going to get tighter. There's going to be a 